because I'd never thought of it. It's not a, a criticism or anything, but just uh, you made specific reference to uh, the potentiality that you or whoever the town crier is can accept honoraria, uh, fees, gifts. And um, I'm just wondering what you envision the criteria. In other words, there's no, uh, there's no set amount here. There's no, right. you, there's just the, the, the phrase may. Or, so if you have any thoughts on that, I'd love to hear. OK, from what I understand from the president of the American Guild of Town Criers, uh, town criers normally try to do as much good for the communities they serve as possible. So that, um, for example, if the town council wanted me to open a meeting or two, um, certainly I would not charge anything. Um, I wouldn't expect the town council to say, oh, well, you're such a wonderful town crier. You opened our meetings. We're going to give you a tax credit. Or, I mean, that would be stupid, uh, so I, 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 especially now, yes. So um, I, I, I kind of thought, like, if there were an event, for example, the, town, the fall festival, uh, I've already spoken to the Chamber of Commerce, and they'd like me to open that up. So if somebody said, well, you've done a good job opening up the town festival, you know, how about a sandwich? You know, that, that's the kind of thing that I would, I would assume is an honorarium. Uh, at, the, at the Historical Society, when we have a speaker, we give an honorarium of $25 or $50, which is certainly not what the people are worth. And I, I would accept things like that, but I don't need those kinds of things. Um, also, town criers do things for, for money. I mean, like if a corporation wants to open a new wing and they want a town crier, then they often pay that. And this person that's the president, his name is Redmond O'Colonies. That's his kind of a stage name. Um, he normally gets 150 to $200 for an appearance like that. Um, that that's the kind of range that, that we do. Uh, I'm going to be performing a wedding this week. I'm a justice of the peace. So that person could choose to have me as a town crier at the wedding, and therefore I would charge a little more than my normal justice of the peace fee. OK, and that another nice segue. It, it sounds, well, maybe let me ask the question rather than just All right. anticipating what the answer is. Could you not be the unofficial small t town, small c crier without the stamp of uh, approval or, or, or the council's action? And what benefit do you see or what necessity do you see um, for the council taking part in this? In, in essence, I already am. Like, I, I performed as a town crier at the Historical Society for one of our meetings. We're having a bridal dress and photo uh, exhibit starting this weekend. I'll be opening that. So I, I can be a town crier as much as I want, wherever I want. The only benefit from what I've been able to tell by having official municipal designation is that you get to be a member of the American Guild of Town Criers. Apparently, for some reason, in their uh, rules, you have to have a municipal designation to be the official town crier in order to pay your $10 dues and be a member of the American Guild of Town Criers. And I think that's a good thing to belong to. So I followed what they said to do. Okay. So that's I, it. Thank you, Ron, very much. And I'll sure. shut up after this. But I, I, I certainly have no opposition. I think uh, uh, you know, there is a certain charm to this position. And uh, I think um, you know, no one is in, I shouldn't speak for anyone else. I, I certainly uh, encourage anything that en enriches the, the town's uh, um, culture or, or charm. I, I just wonder if there's still not a few more uh, holes to plug in the ordinance, just to make sure, for example, what conditions the town historian is subjected to. And if we're going to mirror those, I'd like to see, you know, uh, if we're going to the trouble mm -hmm. of creating the position and, and, and council action being invoked to create the position, I just, uh, you shouldn't read into my ultimate recommendation that we just touch this up a little bit and, and formalize it maybe in our June meeting as anything more than just, again, to, uh, to make sure the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed. Sure. Or the I's are crossed and T's are dotted, as I was about to say. So um, thank you, Ron, and I'll. OK, thank you, Mr. Hall. Uh, Mr. Dell, thank you. Um, Ron, I have a couple of questions. Um, this is new to me, too, obviously. Can, can a town have more than one town crier? A town, is, if I was speaking to one of the councilmen, as far as I'm concerned, you could have a fleet of town like criers. Like justice of the peace. I mean, you could have. Right. 5, 10, 15 different The only crimes. thing that makes a difference is in the American Guild of Town Criers. Their rules require that there only be one town crier who is a member of the American Guild of Town Criers. So if you named me, I would be that member as soon as I paid my dues. Then if you named 15 other town criers, according to the rules of the American Guild of Town Criers, they could not join that organization. 
they could do as many uh, appearances as they wanted to and make as much money or give as much to the community as they wanted to, but they could not be a member of the American Guild of Town Criers. Okay. How, m how many are there official? I'm just curious. I don't want to prolong this. But... From what I remember, there are 400 members worldwide, and there are 20 town criers in the United States. And you get $10 a person? Pardon me? They get ten dollars a person for yes. twenty people. Right. I think they'd be happy if Cheshire signed up fifteen or twenty. <laughs> I, I would be the first. We could host the convention. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would be the first official town crier in the state of Connecticut who would belong to the American Guild of Town Criers. And according to the research done by a reporter, uh, there has not been an official town crier in Connecticut, I believe, since 1674 in Stanford. I don't think we can talk to them. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Dill. Councillor Visconti. Thank you. Um, Ron, I know you're very imaginative, and I give you credit for that, but I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical. Now, the purpose of this is to pay homage to our colonial past, I assume. Yes. Okay. Other than that, I mean, do we always want to be paying homage to our colonial past? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, if, if I were a town and I had an official town crier, I would have them around occasionally, and make them available to the community or to the business community if they so chose. Um, it, it's just kind of a fun thing. Um, it's, I, I guess, as you know uh, from knowing me in the past, I don't always do things that are out there just to be serious. Um, I like to have people have a little levity in their lives. And I think it's an interesting position to have a town crier and to see this person going around ringing a bell and exhorting people to know whatever they want to know and reading from the scroll. It, it's a fun thing. Okay. Anything further from council? No. We're going to move. Oh, uh, Mr. Cini. Um, Ron, we've talked about this. Mm -hmm. I I know you. You're quite a character, and I can see you doing this. Um, I guess we'll discuss this at the ordinance committee level. I'll vote in favor of this. Um, could you talk a little bit about potential town liability? Um, I know that we appoint a town historian, and I don't even know what the liability is that we make that appointment. Um, you're out there as a town crier. You right. cause some disturbance at an event <laughs> from having too many colonial cocktails. Um, cider. Uh, cider. I'm sorry. I'm Mr. Bill, correct me. Too many ciders. Uh -huh. um, does the town have any liability here? I actually don't know. The, the only thing that I foresaw would be members of a town council saying, well, what if a, uh, an establishment opened in town that was not the kind of establishment we would really want to encourage to open in town, and then they wanted to hire our official town crier to be there. In addition to being the official town crier, I am also a town crier. So legally, I would be able to do the opening of that event. But morally, if, if I don't agree with the place that's opening, I'm not going to be there. So um, I guess, as, as a horrible thing as it might seem, you might have to trust my judgment. Oh, <laughs> uh, I should have Next said answer, that. please. <laughs> Seeing that we're going to refer this to ordinance, I think, uh, in, in view of the fact that our agenda is still long, we'll probably wrap it up. Uh, should you become the town crier, and this is uh, just a question I'm throwing out there, um, could we have you open a council meeting once and maybe not have to do it again for another year or two? Or that's, I would not feel slighted at all. No, no, we wouldn't want you, but I mean, it might slow down the meetings. So. Of course. As a so matter of fact, I, I would hope that the state legislature would ask me to open their meeting, you know, the next month. So. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So as, as often or as, as few times as we would choose. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Shrum has a question. No, we're not no, it doesn't relate to the budget, believe it or not. Well, indirectly it does. Uh -oh. um, <clears throat> just this is going to go to ordinance. I'm not on the ordinance committee. Probably will not go to that meeting. But when this does get an ordinance, just a couple of things. It says here creates the ceremonial position. The town. I, I don't know what the, the, I know the town attorney is going to have to rule on this. Does the charter allow for this? I don't know how we got a town historian. I think I vaguely remember doing that somewhere in the deep dark past. I was probably before the current charter, but I'm not sure how that whole thing happened. And if we're going back and we're going to look at this, we might as well go back and look at that, too, to make sure we're consistent, number one, um, whether we're even empowered to do that. And number two, the issue of, of limitations on this thing, because you're right, Mr. Gagliardi, is if this is a lifetime uh, event 
and you could be 95 years old and still a town crier. And there might be somebody else in town that wanted to be the town crier. And you could even okay. have that person if you wanted. How do we how do we defrock you, and and uh, and take away your bell? Okay, and I mean, my my druthers. Stay away from his bell. My druthers are my druthers are that you know you are a very creative individual. You could probably go out and do this. You could probably save the fee to this association. Start your own. What the heck? You <laughs> the fee. And you can go out and do this. Whether we appoint you officially, blah blah blah. Just go do it. Right. and just have a ball and people would laugh and your jokes will be as good as ever and why do you need us other than to join this club? So those are just some things that, because I really don't, we, we got a lot to do here and, and the ordinance committee has a lot on its plate, the town attorney has a lot on its plate. We can't get, you know, maybe there's a way to just do it without getting too messed okay. up on all this. Well, let's refer it back to the ordinance. We'll take a vote on this uh, resolution. All those in favor of referring it to ordinance. It looks like we have a unanimous vote. I also thought there would be some benefit to the town to have this position, you know, just for ceremonial things and PR and that kind of stuff. All right. Thank you for your consideration. Well, you You'll be invited, of course, to the Ordinance Review Committee to, to sit down. I'll be happy to be there. You don't have to come in breaches. <laughs> okay, moving right along, we have uh, 